goes into the wall. How do I do that? Yeah, it goes back to this finishing point, right? Remember, these lines go to that one, so it has to go the other way. I'm going into the wall now, right? And this stuff, you know, kind of obvious, but, you know, when you get onto your drawing, it's like, well, what do I really do here? I mean, I don't know. So I make it kind of look easy, but now I'm going to, so remember, all that's behind the wall. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the side of the cube that's closest to me, if I could see it. Remember, it's behind the wall, which would be kind of this side right here, right? I'm just going to think in my head, how deep do I want this fireplace to be? Well, I'm thinking maybe something like that, maybe. Okay, enough to, I go down and I've created the left plane. How many planes are there in a cube? Six. Six. How many have I completed on this drawing so far for this cube I'm creating? Two. Two. That's right, two. Exactly. One here, the opening, and one here, the side, uh, the side that's cutting in, right? Now let's finish the cube off. How would I do that? <laughs> yep. These two dots, right? We've done the cube. Where that intersects that, that stops, right? Now how many uh, planes have I drawn? Three. Yeah, we've got a bottom, left side, front, or opening, right? Project that up through there, where that intersects that. That should happen right above that if I got everything lined up perfectly. Now I've got a cube cut into the wall. I don't need these anymore. I kind of want you to show your work. You don't need to show me this stuff, okay? But because um, we're going to rate, we're going to do a lot of subtracting in this room. So this stuff behind the wall, not the opening, stuff behind the wall. I still kind of want you to see it, so erase it lightly in your drawing, so I know that you've created the entire cube, okay? Now, what would I, what wouldn't I see in this uh, cube? Everything to the left of this, right? That's the opening, so that goes away. How about everything above the opening, right? All that goes away. And so you're saying, well, why did you create the cube? Because I wanted to conceive how deep it is. I wanted to, I wouldn't be able to find that corner right there effectively. I wouldn't be able to figure that out unless I figured out the whole cube. This is the advantage of, of creating a cube first. This is what designers do all the time. They create geometric forms and they subtract from them. Industrial designers, whatever, whatever, whatever you're thinking about in terms of being a designer, uh, it's all building through geometric forms and subtracting and cutting away or adding more. So now, whoever designed these pins, okay. So that's the back wall, right? I'm going to say the floor is in common with the, the living room space here. So I've created this cutout, this notch in the wall, from building it via a cube, right? Okay. Can you all see that? Now, if you didn't build the cube, you wouldn't have been able to conceive of that. Kind of maybe would have, but it would have been, you know, maybe flattened out and skewed, not, not correctly uh, drawn. Random. Looks like what? It like, doesn't look like it's coming from the other side, like how the other road goes in and then it cuts up. What doesn't the look like? The back. There's not enough information there, really, you know, because um, we're looking around this, okay? So maybe you would want to do this to make it more fully realized. No. I was you wouldn't? Like, okay. Huh? Yeah. How the back is, it looks like it's going further at its opposite. Oh, this little line right here, because it's not very much, there's not very much of a line, so you don't really get a, a sense of the angle, right? Okay, that's the reason, okay? So my point is then, that feeling of wanting to show more information to the viewer, right? Like I did here, right? So I'm showing a little more, I'm, I'm liking that line out, right? That might be an option, but if I do that, all of a sudden, this angle is now skewed relative to the vanishing point. I'm no longer going to the vanishing point with that angle. So my desire to show a little more information in there, okay, could get you in trouble, okay? So you got, you got to kind of live with what you have. If you're obeying all the rules, you just got to kind of trust, the, trust in the process. Okay? That's a really good uh, point, though. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. But the way that you have it now, wouldn't that imply that the back wall of the fireplace is larger than the aperture in the front? Based on the scheme I'm creating, absolutely, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and what I've done is I no longer have this going to a vanishing point. Right. You know, I've kind of had to improvise that angle because I wanted to lengthen this, right? You know? So if I wanted to show a little more of the opening of the fireplace, I'd have to, based on my point of view of this scenario, this scene, I'd have to move the fireplace down this way a little bit, closer to me, so that these lines would be doing more, something more like that. Okay. The further I get the fireplace in this direction, the less I'm going to see of it. Okay, because it's moving to my right. I'm, I'm not seeing as much of it. So, um, so if my desire to see more of the fireplace, I literally have to move the whole thing over. Or make it wider. Or make it wider. Yeah, make it a real wide fireplace, and I'm going to see much more of that. You know, make the opening wider initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I, the last thing I want to do is not have that angle be right, right there. It be correct. Okay. Um, when you when you start kind of improvising these angles, then it gets really funky, as some of you are finding out with the steps. Maybe you haven't got that far yet. You will. Okay. Now well, let's put a mantle, big chunky piece of wood coming out. So I'm going to draw the back of the mantle first. This is why it's so important to understand the the, the object in three dimensional form. You have to. Um, I'm going to draw this the plane of the mantle that's on the wall. I, I don't know where it is out here. I have no idea, but I know where the wall is. I know where the opening stops. I'm going to say the mantle comes right out from underneath the opening. So I'm going to draw a shape. It's going to be kind of a big shape. Back of the cube, okay? That goes up to there, right? How do I know that shape I just drew is on the wall? The bottom of the shape I drew is the opening, top of the fireplace. And the top of the fireplace was a shape that I drew which had a line in common with the bottom of the wall, right? So I'm building from what I know. I start at the bottom of the wall, work my way up. Okay. If I drew something up here somewhere, I could. But I don't really know, am I drawing it out here? Is it here? Is it here? I have to kind of start with what I know, the top of this wall, and work downward. Okay, if I wanted to put, uh, you know, something on the wall here. I don't know how big to make. Okay, unless I'm working from what I already know. Okay. So now let's build this outward. How do I do that? That's right. Yeah, I come from that vanishing point out into the space instead of going in. Same vanishing point that I went into the space with, but I'm coming out this time. One, two, three, four. They all come from here. Now this gets tricky in here. Look at I'm taking a line over top of lines I already made. That's the reality of life. Things get in front of other things. It's going to feel very uncomfortable to do that because I, you know, it's like I don't want to hide that. Well, you got to nature of it. Okay. So here's the side that's closest to me, right? I'm going to figure out how far out I want this mantle to come. And just maybe put a little line in. So there's the side of the mantle. And look, it, I'm, i got to hide this, right? Now how do I finish the cube off? Yep, I go over. Where it intersects this, right? It's the top. That'll intersect that. They should intersect one another right across from one another. Will I see any of this stuff in here? It's all gone now. I don't even see the top of the fireplace anymore. Okay. So, you know, now I have a little surface I can put a flower pot on or whatever. Okay, so we built two cubes, one into the wall, one out from the wall. Okay. Uh, to create this implication of a fire, fireplace, firebox. Well, let's put a rug on the floor that's both in front of the door and in front of the fireplace. Huh? It's going to be the same size as each 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 of those respectively. So, no, it's a square. We're not. We haven't got to circles yet. An Afghan or something? Right? No, yeah, sure. No. <laughs> Like one of those, yeah. Throw rug. No, just a square rug. I'm sorry. Yeah, a square rug. Yeah. How would I find? How would I? How would I position? 
Yvonne, go ahead. Oh, um, so you would draw the, uh, where that, where the bottom of the door is. These two points right yeah, here, right? Those two points, you would draw those to that, that is your point. Yeah, come from, that's right. So what Yvonne's saying, I, I use these as a guide, right? Project out from here across the floor. That gives me a sense of floor. I don't have any sense of floor yet. The moment I do this, though, now, now all of a sudden I understand, oh, this, you know, if I put floorboards in, that's the way the floorboards would run, etc., etc. Now I'm starting to get a sense of floor. Just project those out. And then what for the fireplace? Yeah, the bottom two for the fireplace. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. And where they intersect one another, you know, gives me a, an object in this case. I mean, through here, through here. I gotta go get another.